Who, you can just sh raise your hands on this one. Who was awake at 7.36 this morning? All right, a few of you. Half of you at least. Okay, that's good. At 7.36 this morning, what happened, people? Good job. These people are reading my notes. The sun came up at 7.36 today. Sunrise. I don't have to explain to you sunrise other than the other half of you that weren't up at that time that often don't see sunrise, right? Many of you see sunset. You're good with that. But sunrise. What you may not know about the sunrise is that when the sun, which the sun doesn't move, right? It's the earth rotating, positioning itself around the sun. But when the earth positions itself at six degrees below the horizon, that is officially sunrise. That is what's called the civil twilight. All right? You always learn something when you come here, right? It's all good stuff. It's when the morning light makes objects distinguishable. Six degrees below the horizon, sunrise, civil twilight. Obviously, sunrise is always something beautiful, welcomed. But there was another sunrise that only God could tell us how great it was, right? Part of the Christmas story in the Gospel of Luke speaks of the events before Christ's birth, yet it's all about his birth. So let me show you just a few verses today. We're going to spend just a few moments. We might even get out of here early, people. I promise you that a lot. <laughs> I try to keep that promise. I try, people. But... It might just happen today, just as a little Christmas gift for me to you. All right. <laughs> Luke chapter 1, verse 76. And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High, because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us. I was reading this in my devotion, personal, and I came across that verse, and as many times as I've read it, man, just the Spirit just spoke, and I'm like, that's what I'm going to be speaking about. Verse 79, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide us to the path of peace. Those words were spoken by Zechariah. Most of you probably know the story. Zechariah was a priest, tribe of Levites. He would go in and and uh, offer the incense when he was called up for duty um, into the uh, temple, uh, again on behalf of the people. And he was the father of John the Baptist. Scripture tells us while performing the duties of the priest, one day the angel Gabriel, if you remember, appeared before him and promised him that he and his wife would have a son in their old age. Some of you grandparents in here, you love those grandkids, don't you? How would you like to have a son right now? <laughs> Some of you don't think that'd be an answer to prayer at all. <laughs> oh. Zachariah doubted that promise. Now, you, you know the story, but the interesting thing is that you know, they didn't have any children. It's all that Zechariah and Elizabeth wanted, had been praying for. We know that because when Gabriel appeared before him, he said, your prayer's been answered, which means they've been praying for it, which means God had heard their prayer. This, is, this almost gets into next week's message, but you and I so often don't think God hears our message or our prayer. People, he hears your prayer. There's just, there's a timing for everything, right? And there's also, thank goodness, you don't get everything you ask for, right? The angel appeared before him, told him that his prayer had been answered, that he and his wife Elizabeth would have a son. Would have a son. But Zechariah doubted what Gabriel said, the message from the Lord. And so the Bible tells us that God closed his mouth, made him mute, unable to speak, not until just when John was born, but when they came to him and asked him, what shall his name be? 
And he said John, which that really threw a big hiccup in everything because his name ain't John, right? People, that's how they used to do it back then. If you're going to have a son firstborn, they're named after you, right? That's how it works. I always wanted to have a kid named Clayton. My wife said, that's a stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're not naming any of our kids that. <laughs> would have been Anna. Anna could have been Clayton, but probably wouldn't work. Claytina. <laughs> so God closed his mouth, and then after he was named, it actually says that they brought a tablet, uh, uh, Zechariah motioned for a tablet, and he wrote on there, because he couldn't speak, his name will be John, because that's what the angel Gabriel told him, that's going to be your son's name. You're going to have a son. Oh, I don't think so. You're going to name him John. That's impossible. And then nine months later, his name will be John. And Zechariah could then begin to speak. And when he spoke, he began prophesying this message. It's all laid out in Luke chapter 1. It's just beautiful. I'm giving you just a portion of it. That's, that's from where we're taking our text. The Bible says instantly Zechariah could speak again and begin praising God. The Bible tells us again, filled with the Holy Spirit, he began prophesying in the verses I read, part of that prophecy. Look back at these verses, verse 78. I want to just focus this morning on these verses and the tremendous words and truth that's in them. Verse 78, because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break on us. This was all happening before Jesus' birth, right? Other translations, depending on what translation you have, but that morning light is also day spring. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us. Day spring, morning light, that's a, a reference about Christ. It means sun rising. It also means branch. You, there's many other verses. We're not going down this track, but uh, reference Jesus as the root of Jesse, the branch, right? Verse 78, because of God's tender mercy, the morning light, the day spring from heaven is about to break up on us. Those are just incredible words so eloquently put, spelled out by God about Jesus' birth. And what it brings to us then is why Jesus came, from where he came, and what's the significance of his coming. Now, I know it's probably just believers here this morning, right? Nobody's going to drag themselves out on Saturday, on Sunday morning. Or Sunday, Sunday, uh, it is Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> I clearly dragged myself up. <laughs> After uh, the whole celebration of Christmas and everything yesterday. But listen, why did he come? Why was Jesus born? we got to go back to the garden. All the way back, God created man and woman. Garden of Eden, he gave them every reason to love him, every reason to worship him, obey him, live for him. They were in paradise. Think about it. They had everything. You think about everything you don't have, they had. And a lot of things you have, they didn't have. Because some of what we have, we don't want. Everything they could want and eat, they lived in paradise, perfect home, perfect weather. Perfect place, perfect weather. They had purpose. They got to tend the garden and be entertained by all of God's amazing animal life and just the beauty of creation all around them. And they got to do it all naked. Paradise. Come on, people. You were thinking it. I just said it. But the crazy thing is they chose to believe a lie. Now think about this. Why would they have wanted anything? Because they had everything. And I thought about that, and I thought they chose to believe that God was keeping something from them. Now that's what happens to you and I. Every time we go our own way, sin or whatever else, we think God is keeping something from us, and there's something better to be had. And he was keeping something from them. The curse of sin and death. <laughs> he was loving and protecting them. But they chose the words of the deceiver over the word of their creator. 
you can take their sin, everyone's sin since, and understand how sin's a rejection of God. And listen, no one likes to be rejected or jilted, do they? Let's face it, you don't like anyone who doesn't like you. You probably didn't get anyone a Christmas gift that's done you wrong, <laughs> right? Even Santa has a naughty list, right? They get lumps of coal. Verse 78, because of God's tender mercy. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us. The day spring is about to visit us because of God's tender mercy. The Bible tells us elsewhere, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God didn't love us because we turned to him. He loved us enough in spite of our rejection that while we were still sinners, he loved us before in order that we would turn to him. He created us knowing we'd reject him. He pursued us out of love, tender, undeserved mercy. He loved us first so we would turn to him. Titus 3 verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Why did he come? He came to save. You and I know it, right? We should know it. From where did Jesus come? You know, a lot of people this time of year, you know how it works. They come to the Christmas Eve service or Christmas Day service, and they come to Easter, right? And listen, they get some important, great messages, life-changing. But they also miss out on so much, right? Because they only see that baby in the manger, right? At Christmas time. They see him from being there. He was just laid there, but he was from above. That verse 78, the morning light from heaven, from heaven is about to break upon us. You know, the world can deny Jesus is coming or came and from where he came from. The world can make Christmas about anything and everything that it isn't. You and I witness that every year. It gets worse and worse. They can make it about presents. They can make it about family gatherings. They can make it about Hallmark movies. We watch them all too, people. Some are good and some not so good, right? <laughs> they can make it about money, retail sales, economic growth. They can make it about childhood fables. But the truth is that Christmas is about Jesus coming to earth from heaven. From heaven. Matthew one twenty three says, Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. You don't serve a God who doesn't understand. You don't serve a God that serves from afar. You serve a God that loved you and I enough to come and dwell among us. In the retail or, or, or business world, we call that management by walking around. Well, he's the Savior by walking around among us. This world was dark. It was dark because of sin. And that Christmas day of Jesus' birth, the morning light, the day spring came down from heaven and broke through that darkness. Isaiah 9, 2 says, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Is coming and been prophesied for years prior. Back in the Old Testament numbers, I see him, but not here and now. I perceive him, but far in the distant future, a star will rise from Jacob, a scepter will emerge from Israel. Where did Jesus come from? From heaven. Yet even greater than him coming from heaven, he came from God. For God so loved the world, he gave, right? And we know Jesus is both from God and he is God. A truth that is very hard for you and I to get our mind around. 1 John 5, 7 says, There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. 
I've used this example so many times, it's the best way I can use to illustrate it. It's not my original, I stole it from somebody else, I'm sure. But the only thing we can think of, it's like an egg. You know, an egg's got three parts, the shell, the white, and the yolk. But you call it an egg, right? It's an egg. I don't understand the Trinity. Don't look at me like pastor doesn't know. You don't know either. <laughs> and anyone that tells you to do are a liar. <laughs> How do you explain it? You don't have to understand it. You just have to believe it. You choose to accept it because God says that's what it is. One day you will stand in the presence of the three that are one and it'll maybe make sense and maybe it still won't because God is God and forever will be. And if you don't think that God will ever always you and I be in awe of or us be impressed by, you got another thing coming. <laughs> you and I are never going to have it all figured out even when we're in heaven because God's bigger than that. He is not a created being. You and I are. So we understand why he came because of God's tender mercy. We understand he came from heaven sent by God. What's the significance in his coming? Why does it matter? Imagine stripping Christ for Christmas. I want you to think about this. The world's tried to do that ever since he came, right? Satan tried to thwart his coming. Satan's tried to deny and distort his coming ever since. Imagine if Christmas were everything you know it to be. Just didn't have Jesus. Just bear with me here. Let's walk through this a little bit. Obviously, it wouldn't be called Christmas, right? What if it was just about presents? What if it was just about that, right? Everybody loves it. I mean, you know, I remember as a kid, you know, I've told you this before. I had a, you guys ever remember the service merchandise store? Did they have that up here? No, you guys are looking at me blank. No, it's just a southern thing. Service which I sent out a catalog in October, no different than Sears. And what about Montgomery Ward, people? All right, there we go. We got one. You get all those catalogs, and I kind of had it figured out what I thought my parents would spend on me or my mom. And so I would make a list and I would prioritize for it. And I would always try and hit that budget. I would spend hours, hours, and I would run the numbers. And I'd run the priority of the things that I thought I could live with or live without within that budget. But what if it was just about that? This, I don't know why, I got nostalgic. I looked up the service merchandise catalog. This is several weeks ago. I, I thought, I'd like to have one of those. Just as, you know, $400, you can have one. It's like 400 bucks, you smell it for free. <laughs> What if it was just about the presents? You guys think about that tomorrow when you go stand in line returning whatever it is you're taking back. The decorations are awesome, but what if it was just only that? The family gatherings, they're all fun. It's great to see family and have family, but families make a mess. Families are a mess. And let's be honest. And I'm getting ready to go to a family gathering right after this. <laughs> you all know the greatest moment of a family gathering is when you leave. <laughs> right? When you get home and you take that, <sighs> it's just us. It's nothing to do with you guys. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm scoring so many points today. I just, man, I should have told Rebecca not to broadcast this message. Today. I'm bearing it all. What if it was just about money? Corporate profits, retail sales. You guys, you hear all that, right? You hear about uh, sales are up 18% over last year. It was a record year already just because of COVID and stimulus money and everything else, and sales are up 18% over all that last year. That's all great, but what if it was only about that? What if everything you've come to know about Christmas, what about all those Hallmark moments you try and recreate? <laughs> 
What about all the childhood stories? What if it was all about Elf on the Shelf? Right? What if everything you've come to know about Christmas, what if it was only about that? What if there was no tender mercy from God? What if the morning light never broke upon us? What if the day spring never sprung? You and I, all that other stuff would be so empty, so hopeless, so still in the dark. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. Listen, no Christ in Christmas, no light from the darkness. We would not live in the light of the world, but in constant fear of the shadow of death. There would be no one to guide us to the path of peace. There'd be no one to forgive us of our sins. There'd be no salvation. There'd be no eternity in heaven. Death would win and death would be the end. But you have a God who loved you that in spite of what scripture says, for since by man came death, for as in Adam all died, Praise God, God's tender mercy, the day spring, the morning light that God gave Jesus to truly be our Christmas. Praise God when the angel appeared to those shepherds. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Praise God that his word says the word give life to everything that was created. His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. You and I live in a world where night still comes, but when you have the light of God in you, there's no darkness. Jesus himself declares in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star. Jesus Christ came to save mankind from darkness, to save mankind from sin, to give anyone who believes a future, a glorious hope, a purpose, and to walk in a path of peace. That would, without him, not be possible. <clears throat> Let me give you some verses and we'll be done. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. 1 John 5, 10. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he's not believed the testimony that God's given his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, that this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know. That's a whole other message, people, that you may know that you have eternal life. You have a God who loves you, who gives you the opportunity to have that light. And he wants you to know. You know what Satan wants the most from you? Is to not have confidence in your salvation from Jesus Christ. When you don't have your own confidence, you have doubt. And you will think to yourself, how in the world can I tell someone else when I don't even know myself? I've been there. I know what I'm talking about because it's God's word. These things are written that you may know. God wants you to know that you have eternal life because there is a confidence. You know, we sing that song that nothing else, and I love that song, and Chris, don't ever change that song, but there's one lyric where it talks about you don't owe me anything, 
And theologically, I always struggle with that because I understand the message of it. You know, he, we owe him everything, right? But let me tell you, I do believe he owes us everything he promised because he promised. And that's me having confidence in what he's promised. And that that he's promised, I'll take it all. <laughs> the morning light is broken. The day spring is strong. The sun has come. The sun has risen. And every day the sun rises six degrees below the horizon. It's a new day, new opportunities, new possibilities. And every day since the morning light broke and the day spring sprung, it's a reminder to us what we opened the entire service with in Lamentations. The faithful love of the Lord never fails. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. That's a God who loves you. Right? That's a God who came for you. And that kind of God, we ought to love, right? It ought to be easy to love. May I ask you just bow your heads, close your eyes, just as a little bit of time of, of reflection. Listen, we're ending this year, getting ready to start a new year. It's not about calendar days, though, people. It's about heart. Listen as you think about your life. Is it a life that reflects loving the God who loves you? All the care, all the details, everything he does, the mere sun rising every day is a reminder of the mercies that are new for you every single day. You talk about new opportunities and new possibilities. That's not just a science thing. That's a God thing to let you know, hey, I'm here. I love you. I sent my son to die for you. I sent my son to take his life back, to resurrect, so that you wouldn't have to walk in darkness, but you can walk in the light. To know, to know that my son came to redeem you, any that choose to believe. To have confidence in your salvation that you can go out and not only have that message in you but reflect that light in the world to others so that they too can walk in those new mercies each and every day is that the life you're living out maybe you can't say it has been but listen let's wrap this year up with a big bow people talk to God right now you and him settle things and get right. And let's kick off that new year loving the God that loves you. Heavenly Fathers, we come before you, God. We thank you so much for your mercy. God, we thank you for your tender mercy that, God, when these words were spoken, it was about to break. And, God, we can sit here and celebrate the fact that that morning light did break. The day spring did spring forth. You sent your son for God so loved the world. God, you so loved us that you gave. God, that you may give us eternal life, that we wouldn't have to face punishment as a result of our sin, but that we, for those that seek your forgiveness, would be forgiven. Forgiven and those sins forgotten. God, I pray that as a people, as families, as believers, as a church, that, God, you'd help us. You'd help us to truly get your message and, God, to go out and live it again so that others would come to know you and believe as well. I pray and ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Well, I got you out two minutes late, people, so.